أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله يعز يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون You believe be mindful of Allah as is his due and make sure you devote yourselves to him to your dying moment And it reminds us, Ya ayyuhal nasi, attaqu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa baffa minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaha wa attaqu Allah al-lazhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arhaab inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba People be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and from the prayer of them spread countless men and women far and wide be mindful of Allah in whose name you make requests of one another. Beware of severing the ties of kinship. Allah is always watching over you. And he reminds us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa quulu qawlan sadeeda yuslah lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum zhanubakum wa man yuti allaha wa rasulahum faqad faza fawzan azeema. Believers, be mindful of Allah. Speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose. And he will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. <coughs> this past week, two scholars of this religion returned to their Lord. One of them was from Mauritania. His name is Sheikh Mohammed bin Salik bin Fahfu, also known as Murabit al Hajj. And the other one was a very senior scholar from the country of China, Sheikh Dunik Qawan Abdullah. Sheikh Murabit al Hajj passed away on Tuesday, and Sheikh Dugan. Dunik Qawan Abdullah also passed away earlier this week. I draw our attention to the passing of these two scholars because one of the most important aspects of Muslim culture is this connection that the community, that people like you and I, have with the scholars that are part of our communities, historically. And it is an important connection because of how the Prophet ﷺ described the scholars. Right? You're all familiar with this, with this statement and we will look at this statement and we would like to renew our commitment to this statement of the Prophet ﷺ where Abu Darda told us that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الْعُلَمَاءُ خُلَفَاءٌ خُلَفَاءُ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ إِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُ دِنَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا إِنَّمَا وَرَّثُ الْعِلْمِ Right? The scholars are the successors or inheritors of the prophets. Verily, the prophets do not pass on gold and silver but rather they impart knowledge. Right? And this is the tradition, and this is because of this hadith, and because of the fact that our connection to Rasulullah is kept alive, and maintained, and renewed from generation to generation as a result of the scholarship of these men and these women. Right? And as you know, because, because sometimes certainly Western audiences think Islam is a patriarchal religion and all the scholars are only men and so on, that nothing can be further from the truth. 
this tradition is full of scholarship of both men and women. Okay, and we have to keep reminding ourselves of that uh, by deeply engaging with our history and with the scholarship of these women and of these men constantly, not fall trapped to the um, false narratives uh, that are so often uh, thrown out. So this particular hadith has been narrated by a number of uh, our hadith collectors like Tabithi, Abu Dawud, and Isai, and Ibn Majah. It has been repeatedly uh, uh, brought out in all of the major collections. And the majority of our scholars rate this as Hassan, and some of our scholars rate this as Sahih. This is, it is an Ahad uh, chain of narration. <coughs> and when one of the companions heard this, Fudayl ibn Iyad, uh, he said, the people of spiritual wisdom, hikmah, are the inheritors of the prophets. Right? So he sort of enhanced it and gave his understanding of it. And the insight is that when a scholar attains a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his spiritual connection, in his character, in his adab, or in her character and in her uh, Adam, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly transforms this individual. And Shaykh Murad al Hajj and Shaykh um, Abdullah, Duniga Abdullah, they were of this type of scholar. Okay? And it is also true that not all scholars will achieve this intimate connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're great scholars. And Allah gives us this hint, uh, and we'll share that uh, verse with you shortly. But I want to share just, just a small, uh, I don't believe there's anybody in this masjid who has met any of these two shuyukh. But if you have, you should identify yourself after salah. Um, but we know that a, a, a scholar who lives amongst us in America, Hamza Yusuf, dealt intensively with Murabit uh, al-Hajj. Uh, and I would just like to read very briefly some of the things that he said about Murabit al-Hajj. Okay? And I would like you to reflect on this description and think about what you know about the companions of the Prophet right? So he says about uh, Shaykh Murabit al-Hajj, he told me several times, Hamza, this world is an ocean. And those who drown in it are untold numbers. Don't drown. Don't drown in this ocean, which is this world. I have never seen, Hamza Yusuf continues to say, I've never seen anyone like him before him or after him, and I don't think that I ever will. And he said this maybe a few years ago, much after he interacted and studied with him. May Allah reward him for his service to, his, to this deen and his love and concern for the Muslims. He was never known to speak ill of anyone. <clears throat> he said to me, And what is man other than a comet that flashes brilliant light for a moment only to be reduced to ashes? Sheikh Murad al-Hajj is a master of the sciences of Islam, but perhaps more wondrous than that, he has mastered his own soul. His discipline is almost his discipline is almost angelic. And his presence is so majestic and ethereal that the one in it experiences a palpable stillness of the soul. And as the Arab saying goes, the one who hears is not as the one who has seen. Right. So he's telling us that to see him and to experience and learn in his presence is very different than to hear about it. But this is, we can all attest to that truth. May Allah grant him the highest level of paradise and mm -hmm. So, Sheikh Murad al-Hajj was born in Mauritania. Uh, he completed his schooling in 18 different sacred sciences at a very early age. 
He memorized the Quran by the time he was nine or ten. And, and like the traditional scholars, he not only memorized the Quran, he would, he would like many other scholars of that tradition. See, you will hear about scholars today, and they are good scholars, right? They have deep understanding of this tradition. But scholars of this class used to memorize the Quran. They would memorize whole of Bukhari or whole of Muslim or both of them or all of the six collections. They would memorize commentaries and uh, Sheikh Murad Fakhaid had memorized the commentary by Qurtubi. Remember Qurtubi. He had completely memorized it. Like he could recall from, from memory. Right? So this type of uh, this type of knowledge, okay, and, and parts of our societies, you know, at least in the modern times, we've been told memorization is is not a useful thing. On the contrary, it's one of the most useful things as part of a full holistic education. That when you have in memory access to Allah's words, or access to the Prophet's words, or access to the words of the ulama and the awliya, that they are part of your DNA, because you can recall them. You don't have to Google them and look them up on a computer. This is transformative. Okay, this is transformative. And part of the movement back uh, amongst Muslims to the sound methodologies of traditional Islam is this ability that we have to relearn to memorize and to retain that. Okay, because memorization in the, in the historical communities of Muslim uh, societies was never of the parrot kind. Meaning, it wasn't memorization without understanding. That was never the case. And this is one of the uh, false uh, uh, assumptions that we in the modern world make, that you know, all those people, they just memorize it because maybe we are from South Asia, where you know, there are many Hafaz who have memorized the Quran, they don't understand the word of it. But that was never the case in traditional society. When, when a person memorized the Quran, they memorized it with full comprehension because they knew Arabic before they memorized the Quran. Right? And so I think this is very important for us to recognize that these luminaries uh, of, of our communities in the present are people of great achievement. So uh, looking at um, <coughs> this, this statement of the Prophet Sallallahu that these scholars are the inheritors and successors of the Prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something in Surah number 35. He says, <laughs> We gave the scripture as a heritage to our chosen servants. Some of them wrong their own souls, some stayed between right and wrong, and some, by Allah's leave, were foremost in good deeds. That is the greatest favor. And <clears throat> Imam al Alni, Allah explained in his commentary that this hadith is inspired this hadith about of the Prophet, that the ulama are the inheritors of the Prophet. It is a commentary on this ayah. It is a commentary on this ayah. And in this ayah, what does Allah say? We give the scripture as a heritage to our chosen servants. Allah chooses his scholars. And amongst his scholars are some that have wronged their own souls. And historically in the Muslim nomenclature, we call them ulama as-sultan. Right? This is this is a this is a language amongst the scholars themselves. That they are the scholars of the princes, of the sultan, of the power, of the uh, of the power bases of society. That in some ways they've compromised themselves. And some stay between right and wrong. And their scholarship helped them personally, and they have to draw a fine thin line. And some by Allah's leave, were foremost in good deeds. That these scholars achieved the mark, okay, and we have to recognize that uh, we have to understand how we recognize who is the, uh, as the as the ulama put it, uh, ulama al rahman the scholars of of, of al rahman right? 
This is a very important thing because you and I, you and I need to learn from scholars. Okay? Are we going to learn from scholars who have become compromised or have compromised, or are we going to learn from scholars who are on the path of goodness and have not strayed from it? And the responsibility to assess that lies on you and me. And they, we have that capacity, okay? Because Allah again has guided us. <coughs> <coughs> so the information and the knowledge of the ulama is not merely information because as in all good traditions of knowledge knowledge is useless unless it's transformative if the knowledge that a person has acquired is first and foremost not transformative of his or her own life that, that knowledge is not ilmun nafi'an that knowledge is not useful knowledge because it has not benefited the person who has that knowledge. So that is your first capacity to recognize that if a person speaks the truth and doesn't walk the truth, if a person says certain things but does not do the same things or does not implement the same things, that is the first question mark. Right? That is the first question mark. And this is, again, through the variety of guidances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. The Prophet said something else about knowledge, right? And how Allah blesses by giving knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Transformative knowledge. Okay. مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُهُ فِي Whomever Allah wishes well for, He gives deep understanding of this religion. Deep understanding of this religion. And again, that is a test you can run. Somebody has deep understanding, who talks to you, who teaches you, what will you experience? A transformation of your understanding. What will you experience? A inspire inspiration by their behavior you will be touched your heart will be touched and you'll be transformed by their presence and in their presence and this is the one the person of ilm who acted on their knowledge so Allah has bequeathed them knowledge of what they didn't know right when an alim and Halim, who Allah has favored, has acquired knowledge and acted on it and transformed herself or himself. Then Allah opens further doors into insights to that person. And the person absorbs that, and so on, and so forth. And that absorption and that process of continuous engagement with the knowledge Allah has given, the acquisition or practice of that knowledge, and then the granting by Allah of additional knowledge. This is observable. You can observe it. When you interact with people of that stature, you and I, we will be able to observe it. And so I, I remind ourselves that two great scholars have left, and may Allah reward them greatly, give them Jannatul Firdaus, give them companionship of the Prophet <laughs> and continue to bless the Ummah because of them. Murabit al-Hajj taught or engaged with over the course of the 105 years that he lived. He died at the age of 105. 30,000 scholars, most of whom are alive today. And uh, Hamza Yusuf is one. And Rabi Sur is another one. And these are two that live in this country. There are thousands of others that this one scholar right, has touched and taught. You might have heard of uh, Habib Omar and Habib Ali Jifri and a bunch of scholars from the Middle East, all of whom have studied at the feet of this, this particular, this one scholar. And do you know what his house was? Do you know what his house was? It was a tent with four open sides. That was his house. All his life, that was his house. 
And he was not a person of low means, that is, he wasn't poor. But he lived with the life of a Zahid, okay? of one who denied himself. And every one of those who has visited him talked about the generosity of his family and his tribe and the simplicity of their lives. And th these are things that we don't see today. Right? Which scholar that you have interacted with today lives a simple life? Simple, simple, simple. We read about this uh, uh, amongst our uh, Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi Tabi'een, amongst the scholars. But today, you don't see this. But this was one of those living scholars who lived in that lifestyle. Okay? He lived in that lifestyle. And there are many other stories, and I encourage you to engage with scholars who have studied with him to learn. And, and always, this is the truth about our scholars, always the true value of a scholar, the community recognizes, usually after their death, and the true value and impact of the scholars, the community recognizes, at the hands of his students. Right? So if you have any... Um, good feelings, and we should have a lot of grateful feelings for some of the work that Hamza Yusuf has done for Muslims in the West, in America. Okay, recognize that part of Hamza Yusuf's transformation, significant transformation, was at the hands of Sheikh Muhammad bin Fahd, known as Hajj al-Murabi. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد النبي المين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد العبد ورسوله One of the sure signs that knowledge has been gifted and has been absorbed and has become transformative in the life of a person is that the person demonstrates good character that the person demonstrates good character. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the weightiest thing on the scales on the Day of Judgment is good character. If an alim demonstrates good character, then you know that that alim has absorbed that knowledge and transformed himself or herself. <coughs> and the Prophet also remember what did he say? He said, the believers who are most perfect in their faith are those best in character. And the best of you are those who are best to their spouses. Right? So you'll see this. You'll see uh, in so many cases, when you see the interaction between a scholar and her husband, or a scholar and his wife, you'll see a beautiful interaction. Okay? That's one of the proofs. That this is, uh, this is the quality of a scholar that has become transformative, and that therefore worth us learning from engaging with them. The other thing the Prophet ﷺ said, Hilz, forbearance, is the best expression of good character. What's forbearance? Simply put, patience. Simply put, with any behavior that uh, anyone expresses, to the one who has, who has, who has that hil, the person doesn't react negatively. The person absorbs and then reacts appropriately. Hilm is, 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 is a finer descriptor of the sabr, the patience. Right? And it was a characteristic that a number of uh, our, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, companions of the Prophet acquired because the Prophet himself exuded hilm. Okay? And, and what is an example of the Prophet exuding hilm? That he's walking down uh, one of the pathways in Medina, and somebody comes up to him and grabs him, grabs him by his collar and pulls him up and says, you haven't returned my, the, the, the loan I gave you. This was done to the Prophet in, in front of Umar. What do you think Umar wanted to do to him? Well, Allah, you know, beat him up. Of course, the Prophet said, stop. He's right, and I have been delayed in giving his loan back to him. And he gave him his loan back and gave him some more as a compensation for the delay. Right. This is the helm of the Prophet. Imagine somebody coming to you in public, next to your best friend, grabbing your, your clothes and lifting you up. What would you do? 
not what the prophet did, most likely. But if you have that capacity to do what the prophet did, then you are part of that tradition of him. May Allah give us all the capacity to have the best of character by learning from the best of our ulama, who are the inheritors of the best of creation. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقصى. الله أكبر. الله أكبر. شهد أن لا إله إلا الله. شهد أن محمد رسول الله. حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر 